All right, so day one of lawn transformation. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be starting here on my front lawn. So this is the one that uh, is sodded, but is mostly dead. So what I did is I bought an, a dethatch slash like uh, power rake scarifier uh, just off of Amazon. And so what this is gonna do is it's gonna help just get up all the dead stuff. Uh, there are some grass that has survived. So for me, I'm like, okay, if that grass has survived the abuse it's gotten so far in its life, it's pretty good grass. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to try to work with what I got. Instead of killing off the front and starting fresh, I'm gonna rip out what's dead and then start planting and overseeding uh, new grass seed in there to build up the lawn. And so the equipment I have right here, this is just, uh, one of these power rakes I bought off of Amazon. I've rented them before. The ones you can rent from uh, different commercial places, uh, they're a lot bigger and just heavier machinery, really get the job done well, but it can be a hassle going to those places. So I thought it'd be a good tr uh, chance to try out uh, something just a homeowner could buy. So if you just look on the bottom, you'll get some of these uh, uh, little like spikes, or sometimes you'll have a, there's like a rake attachment so you'll just get some almost look like little claws sticking out there and what those are going to do is get into the ground there and start just pulling up all the dead stuff there uh, in the grass so as you can see here there's some grass that's green but for the most part most of it's dead if you really want to be able to seed and get good effective results from seeding uh, you really got to kind of get the dead stuff out of there because it's going to really block the seed from getting down there uh, into the soil and really start getting established well. So this is what I got just from running a couple lines of it. Look how much stuff it's just pulling up out of there. And you can see over here on the lawn, look at all that stuff, it's just pulling out. And so what this is doing is this is helping to thin out what's here so that that way I can kind of start fresh again. It'll keep the good grass that's still alive, but it's just ripping out all the dead stuff. So all of this was just what I got just from my little front yard. And so, you can see here, I got it roughed up pretty good. So you can actually see down to the dirt there. It left what was green, and it really got out a lot of the dead stuff. Now obviously you're still gonna see some of it. You're not gonna get all of it. But what you wanna get to is where you can start to really kinda see some of the dirt in there. Cause I wanna be able to let some of the new grass seed kinda get in these spots here and really start filling in. And hopefully we can recover and have a nice, uh, dark nice thick lawn so everything's pretty much tore up with my lawn and now it's time to seed fertilize and top it off with some peat moss so i've done lots of videos like this in the past so mostly in my fall renovations but that's essentially what i'm going to be doing here so i tore as much of the dead stuff out as i possibly could and now i'm kind of ready to go and seed and try to get this yard ready to roll so the first thing you wanna do is start out with some really high quality grass seed. Now I've used this stuff in the past. This is Baron Brugg's uh, Turf Saver. It's a RTF, Rhizonomous Tall Fescue. So it's kind of a, a newer variety over the past few years uh, that you've started to see. So it's actually turf type tall fescue that has the ability to spread kind of how Kentucky bluegrass does. Typically turf type tall fescue grows in bunches and isn't really a spreading type grass. But with this stuff, it actually has the same characteristics like Kentucky bluegrass, but is the turf type tall fescue, which gives it the uh, better uh, heat resistance, a uh, lower, little bit lower maintenance than that, and so it's a much easier grass to maintain than typically your Kentucky bluegrass, but you also get the benefits of it being able to spread. Here's a quick shot of the uh, seed sheet so you can see all the different types of tall fescue that are inside the bag. One important thing is when you buy really high quality seed, zero weed seed, so I'm not adding any weeds into my lawn. So now this stuff's gonna go down at about four to five pounds per thousand square feet. Typically when you buy a bag of grass seed, you can just look and there'll be a seed rate on the back of the bag and it'll tell you just match it up for your spreader brand 
set it set it and you're ready to go one thing with seed is you can go over the top a lot of times i'll push it with a spreader and then i'll go back and look through and just try to find some spots that maybe i didn't get good coverage and i'll just kind of do it by hand you can do that a little bit with a seed you don't have to worry about maybe over applying a little bit with grass seed if anything you could just be wasting some seed so you don't want to go overboard but if you feel like you're pretty thin in some spots go ahead and touch it up by hand after you uh, push it through in the spreader now you don't want to do that with fertilizer fertilizer get your rate right and run it and go and trust what you what you did you do not want to go back over things over and over and over again with fertilizer because then you can damage the lawn Now, a personal preference I have whenever I'm doing a seeding job, I like to kind of do a double dose of nitrogen. I usually like to hit it with a uh, more natural fertilizer. Uh, a lot of you know Melorganite. I, a lot of times I put one of those down, and then I'll hit it with a starter fertilizer, which is going to give me all of your different nutrients. So you can see there, 14, 25, 10, whereas these natural ones are typically going to be like 6, 4, 0, something like that. Um, but I like to give it kind of a double dose of nitrogen starting out uh, to get the grass really kick started. You can see right here, I'm using a Scott's Basic Edge Guard. You can see there, the number that I'm going to be using is 12. So that's how you figure out the rate that you're going to be doing. So I'm going to fill up my spreader, set it to 12, and let's rock and roll. Last but never least, my old friend Pete Moss. This is to me the, uh, this is my favorite part about seeding. I love putting down peat moss. I've always had great results with it. So what I like to do after I put down my seed, after I get my fertilizers down, I go over when I, with a nice thin layer of peat moss. Helps hold in the moisture when we get some water or we get some rain. Um, helps hold everything in, simulates that seed to soil contact, gets you great results. Throw down some peat moss. Now, something I've never really had to deal with before is setting up the uh, sprinklers because I had an in-ground irrigation system. So now I have a sprinkler there getting pretty good coverage on the front here. You just want to keep the seed consistently wet. Now, the one area that I am going to be concerned with is the sprinkler doesn't reach this area very good. But it gets everything else pretty good. And then over here on this side, got the little double sprinklers out here. So looking good, looking good. So what you want to do with new grass seed is you want to keep grass seed wet. You don't want to go and do deep soakings, but you want to keep it continually wet. You don't want your new grass seed to dry out. That's the biggest hindrance to new grass is not getting enough water. With this here, run this two or three times a day, and here in a couple weeks, got lots of new baby grass. 